to uh, build our own career online. And especially when you are looking for a job at the moment, uh, we know that the hiring process is slightly different. Companies now are also looking at you and how you look on Facebook or LinkedIn, on, on social in general and on digital platform. So we will have tonight five amazing experts uh, on marketing, social media, branding, personal development, uh, coaching and performing arts. So with these five amazing speakers, we will be talking about uh, what is personal branding, first of all, how we can do in an effective way and how it can, it can affect you as individual. We're going to share some tips, some knowledge that you can apply immediately. Uh, with the events, at the end of the events, we're also going to share an email, going to send to you an email with a replay of the webinar and with the personal brand toolkit, which is a step-by-step -step guide that we're going to use, that you can use in your own time to build your personal brand. But let's start by introducing the speakers. And instead of being me introducing them, I'm going to ask to each of them to say the name, say who they are and what they do. Christina, shall we start with you? Hi. Hi, Rosella, and hi, everyone. Very lovely to see you guys. And my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Um, just a quick, super quick introduction about me. There's not that much to say, um, but I am the, I work in marketing. I'm 20, 20 what, 26 years old already. Um, and I've been working in marketing for a couple of years. I've studied marketing and um, my superpower is that I switch a couple of industries and I'm here today, really looking forward to everyone's questions. Thank you. Dean Paul, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Dimple. I am a global social media manager for UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency. We're basically tasked with supporting and protecting refugees, displaced families, um, stateless people, basically anyone in the world who's been forced to flee their home, whether it's because of war, persecution, violence. Um, so yeah, I I mean, I love that I get to tell amazing, inspiring stories, but also sometimes heartbreaking stories. And uh, I remember when we were having our initial chat as a panel, I was, I was talking about how I didn't want to completely tie my entire identity with my job, but that is still a work in progress. Um, so I'll leave it there. But um, yeah, I love my job. It's not all I do. Great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we actually something that we're going to talk tonight, which is not just about how to do personal branding related to your career, but we're also going to talk about how to express your true self, who you are, a part of your, and that is not related necessarily to your job title. So next, Francesca. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm here and Rosella um, introduced me as Francesca, uh, which is my uh, name, you know, the, the name my parents gave me when I was born. <laughs> but actually, I'm here uh, to talk about um, my experience as a burlesque performer. So I'm here to represent performing arts in this conversation. And so as a burlesque performer, my stage name is Dixie Ramon. So tonight um, you will experience uh, what it is like uh, um, to have different personalities and how you can try to put these two personalities together, which is what I'm currently doing because of this pandemic and uh, because of the fact that all the theaters are closed. So I am the perfect example here tonight, um, or maybe also an inspiration for myself or maybe for others uh, to see how uh, life-changing events can be maybe a gift for you. Exactly. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that as well, like switching career, but all like not switching career just to find like way to still work with your passion and just translate that skills online. So next one is Gloria. Hi, Gloria. 
Hi everyone. Oh, that voice, you're not unmuted. It's so weird in your head. <laughs> <laughs> That's very useful though. It's very useful. <laughs> um, hi everyone, I'm Gloria and I'm a digital creative manager at Universal Pictures International. And I mean, the part of the yeah, creative advertising team. So what we do is we produce the promotional assets um, to promote a movie. Uh, universal movies that are distributed in Europe, Latin America and Asia. Um, so such as like trailers, posters and, and spots. And I personally look after everything that goes online. And I'm also one of the organizers of Ladies One in Design London, who is, um, which is a no profit um, community of women in the creative industry. So we organize meetings, workshops, and we are in an active group on Facebook. And last but not least, Cedrola. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Cedrola, but it's easier to call me Sadie, which everyone in my life does. So please feel free. Uh, I am a personal development coach as well as a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant and coach. And my passion in life right now is making sure that um, we as entrepreneurs or business owners create or cultivate cultures that are equitable and inclusive so that we can attract more diversity and grow with that diversity. So it's so important to create, um, as we're going to talk today about branding, about branding yourself and about knowing who you are and the values that you bring to whatever endeavor you choose so that you can grow with that if you're growing any type of company. Um, I am actually in the US. So for me, it's actually uh, 1.30 in the afternoon. I know for you all, it's uh, in the evening. So <laughs> it's uh, yeah. a little bit different. It's I just kind wine of- time. It's not wine time, it's juice time <laughs> for me. <laughs> but since it is wine time there, it's, you know, it's wine time everywhere, yeah. I think. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's just a little bit about me. Thank you, Rosella, for having me here. Thank you for, for participating in this and thank you for contributing to this conversation. So I want to start with a question that I think is quite broad because I know that everyone here, I mean, between people that is in the room tonight, uh, we have a mix of people that is probably already has some sort of personal brand of line or someone that's starting from scratch. So let's start with a broad question what actually is a personal brand who wants to take the first uh, who wants to take this i mean who wants to start so if we want to give a like some sort of not definition about what you mean what you personally mean by personal brand okay <laughs> okay no, so you said you go because i mean i'm i was just going to make up something yeah. <laughs> Me too. No. <laughs> um, no, Let's break the ice. Well, when I think about a personal brand, I think about what you want people to think of you as soon as they hear your name. So in terms of uh, what you're projecting into the world, I think that that is your personal brand. Who you are is your personal brand. And so it's so important for us as individuals to kind of really tap into what really moves us and what is really authentic to us in order to create an, an authentic personal brand that can um, stand out among the crowd because that's at, in the, at the end of the day that's what we're trying to do we're trying to stand out from everybody else and the only way we can do that is by being authentically ourselves which i think is tied into being a personal brand yeah exactly Dimple, what do you think about like the meaning of personal brand? If you can, like, I mean, there is no definition, an exact definition, but what do you think? Um, I would say for me, uh, when I think of a personal brand, uh, it's actually not so much about the personal side of things, but about how I can add value to a particular community. Um, so for example, once you've found your niche, whether you know, for me, it's being part of the social media manager community or whether you're a personal trainer, you want to be part of the fitness community or whether you're a beauty influencer or whatever it is. 
it's you found your community and your you've done like um i think they call it like a something really wanky like SWOT analysis where you've like analyzed your strengths and your weaknesses and your opportunities and where you fit in with that and you've thought well this is what i've learned from my from what i do this is what i believe in and now, now i'm gonna continue to um, so i think personal brand it can be some i mean it's a bit like well i'm going to look at it through the social media lens um because that's what i do um but whenever you think about your best friend i think it's a bit like what's a good analogy you're coming you're like coming onto a bus and it's very crowded and some people will sit on top of one another but i think it's about trying to look left and right and find an empty seat and think well that hasn't been said before so i'd like to say more of that or oh, maybe it's been said a lot but now you have a kind of kind of a new take on it so it can take it can take time to think about crafting that and i would also say that it's ever changing like something i believed in social media a year ago wouldn't be applicable applicable now and i think you have to give yourself time to grow and change and um yeah so i don't know if that helps in any way absolutely makes sense absolutely and well if you want to give like do you think is a definition of personal brand or is more something that is personal for it for everyone gloria I think what Sidrola said before is really important is something you project and what something a way you want others to perceive you and um, if you project the things that make you different from the others like Dimple was saying it makes you stand out from the crowd because that's your uniqueness that's what what you can give and the project the word project um, I really like it because it's not 100% who you are um, I mean, who knows who we are? I mean, we, we're getting into philosophical questions. So it's just something, you know, What? how do you want present, to present yourself to someone that doesn't have a lot of time to find out who you are? So you can select some of your skills or some of your, you know, the behavior and your character that you want people to, how, how you want people to perceive you. Are you agree yeah. with that, Christina? Or if I can it, exactly if I can pick it back just a little bit on what Gloria said, then I think it's definitely um, something that also changes. It's fluid. But if I've ever heard anything approaching a definition for personal branding and branding in general, I think it was even though this is going to sound a little Pinteresty, but um, I had a marketing teacher that told me a brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And I feel like that is just, it's essential, especially if we think about it as a personal branding of someone who might be looking to grow professionally, someone who might be looking to start their own company, et cetera. It's definitely important. Some people might say it's superficial, but I personally believe that it's what you leave behind when you, when you leave the room, basically. And it's yes. definitely, exactly, it's definitely something that changes. But from a professional point of view, I think it's, just finding a couple of values that align with who you are. So authenticity, definitely, but also that shows the best part of yourself and that aligns with your professional goals. So for example, if you know you want to be in the creative industries, then definitely that brand you represent should be something aligned, something creative, or if you want to be in management, then definitely that something should be professional, you know, something that works well with other people. So it's definitely a matter of, finding something about yourself that can stay with other people and that's something positive. Amazing, yes, true. So on that level, I call you Dixie because it's your real name then. <laughs> tonight, yeah, tonight I'm here tonight. as Dixie. Yeah, so what do you think, because we were talking about like starting to be part of a community or like depending on what you are doing, how you can project yourself, what's for you personal brand? Well, uh, I was gonna say when I when you said who wants to start, and I was I raised my hand yeah. because I'm the I'm the least expert here. Everything I know about personal branding, I learned through experience. So with a lot yeah. of mistakes that I still do, of course. Um, so um, yes, I agree with everything that you all said. Uh, when when you know when I when I started to think about what am I gonna say tonight? What is personal branding for me. I thought about the old business cards. 
you know, before yeah. internet and every and all the social medias and everything, personal branding was probably just your business card, and it was much easier. You just you know choose the color, choose the font, choose maybe an image, choose the type of uh, of paper, and you know that's it, and you distribute business cards around. Um, nowadays, uh, if you uh, want to be anonymous, you can't. If you Google your name, you'll find it. So it's uh, important that uh, we try to um, get some sort of uh, um, control over this, even if we are not selling ourselves um, yeah. uh, on purpose. So, I mean, your um, image can just create itself on the internet without your control and uh, then it will be uh, probably a mess or if you're lucky it would be great and you didn't do anything <laughs> but most of the time you you had to do something about it so thinking about it i said i thought yes definitely personal branding should be something that i want people to think when they think about me um it, i don't know if it has necessarily uh, if, 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 the, if it necessarily has to be positive. Mm. I think that sometimes um, maybe not being negative, but being uh, sort of like real or tough or, you know, saying things that sometimes people just don't really want to hear. It's mm. something that can, you know, make, be part of your identity. So uh, that, that doesn't necessarily uh, mean it is positive so but anyway so you, you want to be memorable so you want people to remember you mm -hmm. and um and so you have to do a lot of self um reflection and a lot of introspection i think before you can really go out, out there and say okay this is how i want to be um remembered this is how i want people to think about me and this is what i want them to say when i'm not in the room so yeah i think when you you tackle on something that is quite important which is self-reflection and it's some, actually something that you do even when you uh what when you do self-reflection you usually find what are your values and then this is bring me to the next question that how does it benefit you as individual and most of all what's the first step that you should follow in order to be your own in order to build your own brand so let's say now we decide i never had a brand before i want to bring my personal brand what can i do what's the first step that i should do um, say you're asking me or you're asking everyone? no i'm asking everyone <laughs> like because it's like so let's say that you we you have a white paper and you want to bring your own brand and you want to bring your all your personal brand. So what's the first step that you should do? So if I can go with this yeah, one, you know. I always always thought that it's almost like any other exercise, any other branding exercise. When you think about the companies that you align yourself with, why do you align your values with those companies? Even this might be anything from like the brand of phone that you buy um to i don't know the kind of clothes you wear and i think um because i had experience some experience in the fashion industry and i was studying to be in fashion marketing where branding is everything um I, it's definitely it's easier said than done it's definitely easier to start with who you are um and think about really think about definitely sit down and think about a long time and very honest with yourself because we're nobody's perfect um, even though it's very hard to admit it to yourself. It's knowing who you are and that once you have these values, you have to know that they don't depend on anything outside of yourself. Like these have to be self-sustaining values. Um, it can be your job, it can be your studies, it can be, I don't know, how tall you are, how pretty you are, how whatever you are. It has to be values that can't be taken away from you. And I think that that's where um, a a really truly valuable personal brand comes from because at the same time as we've seen in the past year things can change so quickly and like you mentioned Rosa, that and um dimple said that it's definitely a challenge and i think a lot of people can relate to um to the challenge of not defining ourselves to what we do professionally 
Um, yeah. Exactly. Defining ourselves through um, values that can stand the test of time. And definitely, I do believe that a lot of people are the sum of their experiences. So we change with time. We learn a lot more about how people perceive us, how we want people to perceive us. And But at the same time, I think every single person has their own core, their own soul that is unchangeable. And mm. at the same time, it, this is definitely, at least in my opinion, should be the root of your brand because it means that it's going to stay authentic. Even though you grow as a person, you know, you might change. Like, I always think about when I was a teenager, I wanted to have a, a Lincoln Park tattoo on my neck. And think, you know, I changed my opinion about that because that would have been quite a challenging thing to carry for the rest of my life. So we change our opinions, you know, as we grow, we change our tastes, but these values that don't depend on the outside world and they can be anything, you know, they can be the kind of things like, for example, you know, they can be the wish to always be the kindest person in the room, you know, the wish to, you know, to always have something positive to say about somebody else or Francesca, you mentioned you want to be memorable, you know, that can also be your thing that you're always going to be the most honest person in the room. Um, for better or worse, you know, that's the, the entire entire idea. But at the same time, we continue throughout our lives. And I can see, you know, as we grow older, we learn a lot more. And it's definitely not an easy thing. And at the same time, I think it's important to remember that we don't know everything, if that makes any sense. And yeah. um, that it, it's good to give ourselves time to discover these values you're not supposed to be 15 and have these values already figured out. Yeah, exactly. If you, can I can I add one thing to that? If you struggle with um, imposter syndrome, like pretty much almost everyone does, and <laughs> including myself, um, you know, when they ask you a question, like say something funny about yourself, I, I just I just want to disappear. I don't know what to say. Is <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the person I hate the most, honestly, just like funny, funny, funny. I'm funny. I'm funny. I'm not funny. Um, I reach out to your friends, reach out to your partners, reach out to you, your parents, your caregiver, your colleagues, and just ask them, who am I? Like, what, what do you think of myself? Like, just, just give me a couple of adjectives. What am I good at doing? Because I've, I've done it. I've done it in first person. I've tried it with myself and I received a list of like wonderful words and they're your friends. So they're not going to tell you you're a horrible person. So it's a good start. <laughs> start from there. Um, and they're going to make you realize, okay, this is, you know, creative 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 there's four people saying that i'm creative so i'm definitely creative i'm gonna put it in my bio i'm gonna put it in my you know personal branding so mm -hmm. yeah if you struggle with a little bit of like you know blank page at the beginning reaching out to your friends is always a good idea and it makes you feel so much better trust me <laughs> do a focus group that's basically any yeah, it's actually something that I add as well in the personal brand toolkit that I will share later, which is like, for example, highlight sort of value that you recognize in yourself, double check with your friends of people that knows you. And eventually, if you are really brave, you can even put up that and ask the question on social to people that doesn't know you to get like distill really the perception that other people have on you outside your your mind because sometimes we can see ourselves like better than who we are or sometimes worst so most of the time when you ask your friends or even people that doesn't know you that come out with definition of you that you never think about if you are oh, really you see me like that oh, that's pretty good or the opposite but that is a really good exercise. Thank you, Gloria. What do you I think have, about? Can I ask yes, something I have, to Gloria? I, have, I, have, oh. I would like to ask. I would like to ask something to Gloria. Don't ask me one fun fact about me, please. No, no. <laughs> you, can you tell us something dramatic about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> dramatic. I'm Italian. I'm a drama queen. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, drama. What, uh, what I was going to add to that is there's a very good exercise that can be done, uh, especially when you're trying to learn about yourself, you know, as, as a personal development coach, this is, you know, 
my my area. But one of the things that that it, that really works is um, thinking about and writing out your eulogy, mm. um, because <laughs> what it yeah. does is it forces you to think about what you want people to think about you at the end. And then it gives you this blueprint of where to go of, you know, so you can always refer back to it. Well, am I actually living up to these ideals? Am I living up to what I wrote down that I want people to think of me? And if they want, if I want them to think this of me is what I'm doing right now, or is how I'm projecting myself right now, actually going to get them to think that or think something else. So it's kind of a, I know we don't like to think about death and we don't like to think about the end of life, but it's actually very useful to think about it that way because then you you're you've got that 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 thing that says, okay, that's not exactly what I want people to think about me. So let me rethink this and let me see what it is that I do need to do in order to live up to these ideals. And like mm -hmm. Christina says, you're going to you're going to evolve. And so there's nothing that says that you can't rewrite your eulogy every, you know, year, two, three, four, five years. But the idea is that you actually have something to shoot for, an ideal yeah. to shoot for, and a brand to create so that when you are not in the room, this is what people are saying about you because you're not going to be in the room when you die. I mean, you'll be there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the ultimate leaving the room. Right. <laughs> That is actually also a really good exercise. So we were talking about, we are talking about like personal brand, but sometimes personal brand for creative people. And I think in the audience, we have a few creative people as well, uh, like artists, but also like graphic designer. So putting your work, the creative work out is a little bit how to show yourself and um, what's the best way for you to get rid of your insecurity and be more confident in putting your work out there? I'm going to start with Dixie now, because as putting your personal um, personality out is part of your of your job. My, so my exactly. So what 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 do you suggest to someone that is actually a, an artist, a creative person? And you know, as a creative person, you usually tend to have a doubt about your work. You don't want to put it out because you fear the judge of people. So what do you suggest to them? Okay, so I need to to, to just say something before I give you the right answer, which is like for me, it would be much easier to just strip. You know, take off my clothes than, you know, having to speak in front of people, first of all. But anyway, yeah, because, um, you know, I was saying I'm a burlesque performer. So basically I get on stage and I take my clothes off in a very artistic way, maybe telling a story, inspiring, getting inspired by divas from the past and putting a lot of uh, attention to details and beautiful makeup, beautiful hair, beautiful um, um, dresses and on all of that. So I basically, when I get on stage, uh, really get naked in front of the, of the audience and I expose myself for, for real. And, um, you know, by doing it, you build your confidence because you get the feedback of the audience and that helps a lot, of course. So we all need that. Arty, artsy people, they sure have something to say and they, they want to, to express themselves. But of course, um, when we get feedbacks, especially if they are good feedbacks, then we build up our confidence and we start to, you know, we have uh, the confirmation that what we are saying uh, is good, you know, and people enjoy it. So definitely my experience helped me building up my confidence. But of course, you have to work on yourself and all the things that we already said work for artists too. You have to, first of all, try to be good at what you do. So in my, in my case, uh, I don't really need to be only good at stripping, although that's enough too, but I have to study 
dance, I had to study to study um, performing arts, uh, acting yeah. skills, you know, a, a lot of things. Burlesque as is, you know, a, a big part when you put everything in there. Um, but also then you have to work on yourself and especially you have to ignore judgment. Let's say like you just uh, said that word, you said, you know, aren't you afraid that people will judge you? Well, I think the worst enemy are it, our, ourselves, especially when you're an artist, you most of the time are very tough with yourself and I am very tough with myself. So the worst, the, the hardest part is shutting up your inner judge you have your inner judge and you know just take a risk and go out there and you know learning by doing it so if you get a good feedback then wow cool you know but i have to get better anyway if you good if you get a bad feedback you know just start try again try and try and try until you get where you want to you want to get it's like when you have a personal crisis you know when you are into the crisis then you think that the world is falling apart then you are worthless and uh, you might as well just end up your life and that's it nobody will remember you but the, if you delve into it you are in that and you you know you give yourself the time and you listen to yourself then from that you will learn so you know take all your experiences as a, as a growing experience and take a risk just Put yourself out there. What I mean, what 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 is going to happen? The people don't like you. Who cares? Yeah. But you know, it's like for, for a lot of us, it's like can be quite difficult to deal with that with someone critique. So especially as artists, you see your work an extension of yourself sometimes. Uh, so Gloria is, is is not like you agree with that, and I think it's it's quite true because when you put out your work as a creative person. If they judge your work, is like a little bit, you take it that personal. So how you will deal with that, Gloria? Because you are a creative, uh, you, you work as a creative, and obviously you work in a corporation, but you have your own work and your own like kind of projects. So what you will say about that? I still struggle with that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um... I'm getting better with the years and with the experience, to be honest. But at the very beginning, when I started working, like you said, Rosella, when you present something, you present an idea, an artwork, an illustration or anything, and it gets criticized. And maybe maybe you have some managers that are not really good at feedbacks and they don't really know how to deliver feedback. You take it really personally and you think you're a failure and that's not your path. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, it will, it's always good to remind, and I still do it right now, that your work is not you. It's mm. kind of an extension of you. So if, if the, the work doesn't work, sorry for the word, um, if it doesn't work, it's not that you're a failure. It's just that extension of you that didn't work out in that context, in that moment of your life. And it doesn't mean that it's a complete failure. And I think when it comes to social media, again, I'm the worst at following my own advice, um, but I try to. When you put something on social media, it's not just the fact that it's not you, it's your work, but it's also not you, is the algorithm. So when you post something on social media, um, it's, it's a crowded environment. And especially if you just open a page and if you just start publishing, it's, it's not going to, it's going to happen. It can happen on TikTok. Everyone could go viral for like this um yeah. but mainly on like visual platforms like instagram it takes time to build your niche and build your community so don't feel like you're a failure because you posted something and you received three likes one of those your mom um it's gonna go it's gonna get better but you need to be consistent um and don't think you're a failure if you don't receive the approval that you're seeking for yeah exactly and sometimes it's like it's important especially when we are talking about social media and i will obviously ask dimpo and christina about that because we have this kind of what we call vanity metrics and we also need to like you said you also is like quite difficult especially at the beginning because on instagram you need to work with a is a little bit of you need to build a relationship with the algorithm so on that level dimpo what's your 
suggestion when someone is starting to build a brand or a personal brand and start to put that work out there what's the best way to in a way let that work be seen um I'm just gonna... yes go go sorry i was just going to quickly answer one of the previous questions which was about handling insecurities and um judgments and stuff and two things that really helped me was um keeping a brag book so any nice email that i got i would like put it i drag it into a folder and put it into like nice emails or great feedback um and whenever i was having a bad day i'd go and even if it was like four emails i'd be like okay well these four emails let me know that i'm appreciated and i'm at least somewhat good at what i do and then the other thing i would do is or starting to do now is have a, what I call a challenge network. So people who aren't in like my direct team, who will just be like telling me, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. But actually someone who is kind of related to my field, but doesn't directly do what I do and can help me and is like a trusted friend and who I can just say, well, you know, what do you think of this idea? And they'll give me the unvarnished truth. Um, obviously it takes time to like build up a challenge network because it depends on trust as well. But um it's something that i started doing like last year um and it's really helped me out so brag book and challenge network i would say definitely think about doing that but coming on to the social media question yeah it's so it's so hard these days like as gloria said it's such a crowded saturated market every niche every community you can think of is is thriving and you think how am i going to find a place in that and i remember my one of my previous managers said uh for better or for worse the world um basically rewards those who are best at communicating ideas but not those who have the best ideas if that makes sense um mm. so in terms of social media i think it goes back to what we were saying about doing your strengths and weaknesses um and your opportunities um doing your research and then thinking about the your basic goals whether that's to like sell things or whether that's to give advice or whether that's to just learn more and then I would think about uh, whenever like I talk to people about building a brand like that they want to sell stuff in or build a business, you would have comms pillars attached to that. And then within that, you'd have like your content ideas. So that would be like videos, graphics, images, whatever. But let's say you're like, uh, uh, I'm just going to come back to personal trainer again. I don't know why. And you want to, you know, target like a particular audience, like let's say just vegans who want to like, learn more about nutrition but also like still work out and so you that's your goal and you have your four comms pillars which is like um you know educational content and then inspirational content and then entertaining content and then so that's like your three comms pillars as such and then within that you'd have like okay well every monday as part of my educational pillar i'm gonna post like monday mythbusters or whatever mm. and so i think thinking kind of really thinking through your aims and then how that can be executed through content pillar, through your comms pillars and then content ideas uh, and then you can think about the visuals and the copy and the and then like you know putting it all into a calendar and then uh something that christina mentioned before as well is really doing your market research and really seeing the community that you want to join and um and also contact people who are already in that community and, and get advice um so yeah i'll leave it there but uh, I, hope that, I hope that's helpful. No, it's it's actually it's actually really good. And the think of like creating four content pillars is is something that really resonates with me. It's something that you create even for work when you have to promote an event. Like I'm talking about even marketing. You usually have something that is more related to the content of the event, and then you have the inspirational content. So obviously for every single industry and for every single product let's say because at the end of the at the end of the day when you present yourself and you're talking about personal branding is a little bit like oh we lost francesca she's probably gonna go back um is a little bit like present your yourself as a and it, it's sad to say a little bit like a product so on that level christina what's your suggestion so how we were talking about like um, going back to the question that it was like, what's the, the about the confidence and about how hard it can be for a creative person to put the work out there? What do you suggest? So definitely a framework, starting with a framework. And I think the, just speaking from personal experience, 
the cure to my well not the cure to my anxiety but the thing that usually helps me put my work out there and in any situation is just research it's definitely knowledge i feel like knowledge gives you confidence being able to walk into a room and it, it simply it takes out the element of surprise to a, a certain degree obviously you can never predict everything but definitely when you walk into a room and you know what to expect even for example an interview walk into a room and you know who you're talking to because you've researched them on linkedin you've seen them profiles online you know everything that you would be um supposed to know about a company that takes out the element of surprise and that's usually what generates anxiety about our work uh, but when we go back to putting ourselves out on social media uh, whether you're branding yourself or branding a product um it's definitely important to have this framework that dimple mentioned and that's such an excellent example um but at the same time to understand that social media is a lot and the internet in general is a lot about trial and error there's a lot of trying in the background that nobody sees when you check out a really famous Instagram profile. Um, like if you check out, I don't know, personal trainers, Kayla, um, itsiness, itsiness, I never knew. Anyway, uh, she's a really famous um, fitness model and she's got a big Instagram and everything. But, you know, everyone got to know her probably when she was already quite big, nobody saw how much she toiled before she got on Instagram, you know, like all the things that she did, all the research, how she got started and all the mistakes that you make along the way, unless you've been a follower from day one, um, you know, it's very hard to tell sometimes. So definitely try, fail, try again, fail better, try again and again. And until you find something that works you'll see in the end you'll see a pattern there's no other way but you will see a pattern and then your job is to replicate that pattern um in order to continue your growth so that's definitely what i've seen from my experience especially with um not just social media but content in general online um it's definitely at first this trial and error and it's gonna take a lot of effort like it's not gonna be easy um or unless you go viral on TikTok, like gloria said that, yeah like, that's yeah. <laughs> the rest of us have to work basically yeah it's, it's actually a kind of a hard work like when you are, when you start to work like when we are talking about the role of social media manager everyone think like i remember watching just one episode because i found it a little bit stupid like uh well, don't Paris. say it. don't say emily in paris i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> i think it's every not true. manager not hated true. that no true is not true we that have a webinar a about women in paris huh? what we could say? have a webinar on women in paris oh my God. that is so <laughs> wrong because it gives the wrong impression about what is the role of social media manager the actual social media manager works hard on content because it's so difficult to summarize with a picture and a copy an entire topic and like give an impression, like a communicate the message and at the same time create engagement. It's really hard and there's a lot of work behind that. So I found it, I watched just, actually I have to say, probably half of the, the first episode I said, mm, it's not for me. Right, so let's go, obviously everyone, I mean, if you love that series is fine, but just my personal opinion. I watched all of it. I watched it till the end. I, oh! Oh, I have fun. so you I was, I was cringing yeah but I think it's like it gives like a little bit the wrong opinion it's a little bit like when for like an old generation like me watching sex in the city and you think that be a journalist and everyone is be a columnist is like be the main character like uh anyway it's not like that at all you get paid nothing you cannot have that kind of shoes because no, it's not going to work. Uh, we probably you probably get paid ten pounds per article at the beginning of your career. Experience that. So, um, oh, this is okay. actually a really good connection with what we were saying, Rosa, about that on social media, but also on screen. You don't see what's behind it, and you don't see the real. You know, it's what you want people to see um, of you. So. Um, even not even on TV. So what we see is like the glamorous version, but what's behind yeah. it is like hard hard work and then fading, trying again and fading and try again, like Christina yeah. was saying. So also also on TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think it's also quite important that all of you are quite honest and say that 
like everyone, we had failure and you can fail. And from the failure you learn and then you learn to do better. And like Francesca, yes, Tadi, you were saying, you want to say something about it, yeah. Yeah, um, so when I was thinking about, you know, listening about the, um, the confidence part of it, um, there are two things that I want to say. One is um, sometimes it's, I, I understand that difficulty of putting yourself out there. And I really like, I think it was uh, Dimple who said that you should have someone, uh, trusted people that you allow to see what it is that you want to put out there so that you can get that, that kudos and that feedback and then gives you a little bit of confidence to put it out there. But I also think that if you create an avatar for yourself um, and use that avatar until you feel more confident about just yourself, so you can, it's like creating a, a separate persona, just like um, Daisy. Um, that can also help you build your confidence. And then there's one other thing that I'd learned a few years ago, and that was to have a way, something that you use that allows you to step into a separate persona. So that persona will have all the traits that you would like to project and if, especially if you're a shy person or you're someone who's very nervous about that. And what I mean by that is whenever I'm teaching or whenever I'm coaching or whenever I'm, I'm um, consulting, I wear my glasses. Because once I wear my glasses, I, I put, I, I feel that, okay, now I am the expert. Now I am the teacher. Now I am that person. Because then when I take my glasses off, I don't have to be that person. I can just be me and I don't have to be in front of the camera. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to, to, to feel a certain way. But when I put on the glasses, I say, mm -hmm. okay, now I need to allow myself to to be okay with what I'm doing. So those are the two things that I kind of wanted to, to, to bring forth because I know how hard it can be for some people to actually put themselves out there because artists, especially, it's an extension of yourself, whatever you're doing. If you're a writer, if you're a, um, a visual artist, if you're a, a, a singer, whatever it is, it's really hard to put yourself out there because it's, an extension of you. And when people say, mm, I didn't like that, you feel like they're saying that I don't like you, but they're not really saying they don't like you. They're just saying that maybe what you're doing could be adjusted. But most people don't have the the wherewithal to be able to say, give that kind of feedback. <laughs> and so you kind of feel like they're, they're talking personally and they're really not. They're just saying, you know, what you did, I didn't really appreciate, but I, think that it could be better this way. And so you kind of have to separate yourself, find a way to separate yourself. So I think that the avatar or having the talisman, the thing that you do or that, and it doesn't have to be glassy, it could be that you um, wear certain shoes or that you stand a certain way for a certain amount of time. And that gives you the feeling of, okay, now I'm ready to do this. So it could be a whole lot of different things that you can trick yourself into going, yes, I'm ready now. Let's, let's, let's go forth and, and, Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And actually on that one, we, we know that, you know, like it's quite difficult, especially, especially at the moment, because with the current pandemic, pandemic crisis, it's forcing a lot of people to reskill because some industry have been completely shut down, like hospitality, events, entertainment, art and performing art. So what would you suggest to someone that doesn't really want to leave that knowledge and experience behind and want to use a new platform to express themselves and create new opportunities? Who wants to take this? Oh, no, oh, yeah, you can go, Sadie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, my sister, I think I mentioned this when we were doing a meeting, but my sister, she... Um, she was the COO of a um, black burlesque troupe. And their thing was that they were they would travel to about 35 different cities in the United States and they would do their show. And then of course, in, in March, everything just went bam, they were all home. And so what they ended up doing is for during the summer or during the spring and into the summer, they, they went on Instagram 
and did the show on Instagram via lives. And doing that allowed them to continue to nurture their audience because their audience was starving because of course everybody wanted to get out. And so they were able to go out there, nurture their audience through their um, social media and also even raise money through their social media by putting on their cash app. And, you know, because people understood that their industry was in trouble. And so I say that to say that maybe what you need to do is simply pivot and see how your skills, the, the thing that you do or the job that you have can be pivoted in order to serve an audience that is a virtual audience because i don't think that this virtual thing is going to go away anytime no, soon exactly. as a matter of fact i think it's probably you know people are realizing companies are realizing that the the hybrid model works really well let people work from home and also work in the marketplace and then some companies are nixing the offices all together so it's really important to say okay how can i which is my favorite question of all time how can i um how can i use the skills that i have and online how can i pivot and and use the skills that i have online or in the real i mean in mail mail if you have to mail something, mail order, how can I do what I need to do in order to stay viable and relevant in this new world that we live in? Um, you just have to get creative is what, is what I think. You have to really get creative. Yeah, and actually it's something that when you when you talk about create, be creative, you know, it's quite difficult, especially if online is not what have you done till now. Like you've never been online, so you don't know where to start. So for someone that, for example, has been in performing art in now, what you will suggest, how they should start, what they can do in order to pivot online and in order to switch from, not by switching industry, let's, continue to do what they love to do uh, because I found quite disturbing the campaign that it was out a few times a few a few months ago like with a ballerina say oh, she can be a cyber um someone that work in IT I said no she wants to be a ballerina so that campaign was completely wrong and I found it quite disturbing so a lot of people doesn't want to put on the side 10 years of experience or their career to become a coder. So um, what do you suggest to someone that actually uh, wants to improve and like bring their experience online? What, which kind of platform they can use that are not just social, for example? Christina? Yeah, I can go a little bit because I just, I love the word pivot. It's one of my favorite is because the reason why is because pivoting, like you said, doesn't mean changing your industry. You keep your same access, you know, you just switch your perspective. Um, so going off of um, Sadie's um, excellent advice is simply taking the skills that you've gained in your industry and thinking of other jobs, other positions, other activities where those skills might be valuable so and then i'll get to the platform because it's not it's definitely not just about social media it's definitely about again doing a lot of research and finding yeah. your need um because there's so many people doing so many types of things nowadays it it can feel crowded like i think both gloria and dimple mentioned it, that it can feel so difficult to go out there because there's so many people already on instagram on youtube on so many other, other platforms but finding your niche and knowing um, how to target your audience. Like, I think that's just essential. Um, and being able to segment because you're not going to make everyone happy. You're not going to get everyone to see your content and think it's brilliant. This person is amazing. 
Um, so it's definitely important to understand your audience, understand what they want and understand what you want to put out there. And for each type of interaction, there can be a different platform. So definitely perhaps Instagram is like the default because a lot of people here are creatives and it's simply where you go to find other creative people. Um, but there's definitely other platforms as well. So for example, when you think about um, a lot of people got their creative start on Tumblr, which is not that big of a deal anymore, but it's definitely, you know, um, other places to search for platforms or why not start your own, start your own. <clears throat> start your own, your own website, you know, where you have complete control, everything that goes on there, um, and then market your website using a variety of other platforms if you don't feel at home anywhere. Um, and definitely when I mentioned the idea about the pivot, so my change of industries was basically going from studying and working for years to be in fashion marketing, but then suddenly finding a job and being super happy in the software industry, not as a coder or as a cyber anything, still in marketing, uh, still in content creation, but it was definitely such a big switch of industries. Um, that, But at the same time, I found that the skills that I gained in fashion were perfectly applicable. For example, I work now in uh, creating content, which is branding, but also partnerships. Um, partnerships that I gained a lot of experience by working with influencers and contacting people and um, arranging projects with them. So, for example, project management, if you're good at organizing, that's a skill that translates in anything. Um, if you're a performer, have you thought about teaching other people to perform? Or, the, for example, we all assume it's natural. It might not be true, but we all assume that performing, performers and artists have some kind of um, reservoir of confidence that they have some some kind of they know the secret to how to be confident because they go on stage they let so many people watch them um, they must be confident or know something maybe you don't know you don't have the secret but people think you do so why not you know gather a bunch of people start teaching start showing how you learn especially if you have a lot of experience I think it's definitely it takes courage to branch out and to put yourself out there and say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to teach. I don't want to. But at the same time, I absolutely believe in trying and failing. If you've tried it and you failed it, you can say, I gave it a shot. I gave okay. it a shot. Didn't work out. It is what it is. Move on. But if you never try it, if you, oh, I don't want to teach. I suck at teaching. But you've never actually tried to teach anyone anything. Then how, you know, and you might just find that you like it. You might just find that you like it and you want to get better at it. And that's how, how that's how you continue. Sadie, I, I, I can see you nodding. Yeah, I see that you want to Tell say me. something. Tell me. Um, Tell me uh, no, I, I completely agree with you. And especially, you know, when you said, you said that about performing artists and that they should, um, maybe they should teach. I was like, exactly. You know, my husband was an undergrad theater major and he has his master's in screenwriting and he is a screenwriter he's a writer but he's also a professor and he uses a lot of the skills that he learned as an as a theater major in his teaching so he really engages the students so you don't you you don't know if you'll like it if, until you try it just like christina said and if you try it and you like it you can use those skills in that new arena and really stand out from the crowd. I mean, we're talking about personal branding right now. I mean, like my, you know, he gets, he always gets really great ratings from the students because they just engage with him and they just love the way that he just, you know, he scares them, he makes them laugh. He, he, he's not afraid to make fun of himself because he has that theater background and he knows that he's performing for them. So. You know, like you said, you, you never know. You can take one thing from one industry and pivot it to a different industry, and all of a sudden, you found where you're supposed to be, <laughs> and you never knew that. You're you're on mute, Rosella. <laughs> I'm on mute. I'm on mute because I keep receiving. You know, I even if I turn off my my mil millions of applications, I still have some sounds in the background. So what I was saying is like, what do you suggest to someone that, for example, is coming from a world that is not an online and it wants to, like, it doesn't want to change his or her career. So what do you will suggest? 
how to use the digital platforms on this way in this way gloria oh it was me <laughs> sorry <laughs> um so someone that never been online and doesn't want to change his career being a performer or the any kind performer, of background like even someone that let's say used to work in used to do like as i said before like works in events uh but like mm -hmm. more operational side or entertainment all of this industry that unfortunately at the moment are like shut down so they actually you cannot actually work and even if you're looking for a job you can't find anything so you have to reinvent yourself so yeah. how you would the, the 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 platform digital platform in that way yeah I think, first of all, it's really difficult to, to say because you need to find yourself in a situation in which you could, you, you, you have to have the kind of things and, you know, the, the, the money and have saved to then go outside and try different things yeah. online and to be able to do that. So first of all, it's really tricky to say just you know start a start a facebook page yeah. start an instagram page because you need to you need to have that kind of privilege to be able to do so um but i think that um there's a lot of way to use your skills online and maybe find even a way to get some um money out of it um so one could be teaching there's a lot of platform like christina said to teach your skills and on that note um whenever i organize portfolio reviews for ladies one in design i always have lots of um people say oh welcome back yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um lots of people um saying to me you know i i'm not i'm not able to do to mentor i'm not able to do a portfolio review i i don't I can't do it and never done it before. But if you think about it, there's a lot of like students and people that have less experience than you, that even if you tell them something that for you, you just take it for granted. For them, it will be a new kind of information. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely try to, and, and especially right now that we're locked in our houses, um, we're all looking for to try different things and learn new things. So teaching could definitely be a good way. And then, you know, if you're if you're in event organizing, maybe you can organize a virtual event and put like a ticket fee on it. Reach yeah. out to people that want to um, speak at your events. Um, there's Eventbrite as a and the events, amazing platforms that allow you to just organize something from your your bedroom and your living room. So if you're like really passionate on something, you're gonna find an audience on social. And especially right now, where everyone's at home, the audience is global. So you don't yeah. need to find a venue. You don't need to pay for sponsors. You don't need to pay for food. You just need to have a really strong idea, put it out there, put like a minimum fee to join because you know people <laughs> people gotta eat. You gotta have to pay your rent and see how and see what's your feedback. What's the feedback? Yeah. We were saying, um, Bixie, that for, especially for people Monica. that is you know, money, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You change the name every every two every twenty minutes. I'm sorry about that. We had some problem for the speakers to come in today, and it's been also like I have to say I want to share this because I obviously trying to be like, um, yeah, everything is fine, and cool. in the meantime, everything is cool. In the meantime, is a hell behind because Francesca cannot come in again so you know it's like everything is fine now like how to sometimes you know you know you learn a new challenge so uh, this is probably going to be a good learning curve for me for next event um so what you we were saying is like a lot of people are like at the moment need to switch in between a way that for example they were working in events live events or performing art or they are dancer they are actress actor uh they like you know working in a space that it was not online and they don't want to become a coder they don't want to become a web designer and they don't have any interest in becoming a social media manager but they want to keep their professional skills and just pivot online so what do you suggest how are you facing that at the moment dixie because well, you are um... yeah you are facing uh, this situation 
I'm facing hardships and uh, so as I was saying uh, when I, we started this uh, meeting, I'm uh, in the middle of an identity crisis. <laughs> completely there like just like in the in the storm like imagine you know a small boat uh, on the uh, on the yeah. on, in an ocean and with the big waves and storm and winds and everything so that's where i am now and i'm alone on this boat that's how i feel in this moment so um, we go back to what i said earlier feel yourself sit down don't try to do anything don't try to go anywhere don't ruin also your relationships <laughs> sit down and listen to yourself and you know do all the things that we said before right you know have a diary and uh, whatever just try to see what what your skills are what your hobbies are what your interests are because i'm pretty sure i'm not only a burlesque performer so at this moment burlesque cannot happen at least not the way i like it i personally don't like show online shows i don't like to see a performance uh that is done in in a living room it just loses the magic burlesque needs an audience okay so i didn't even try to do that although a lot of my colleagues have done it and i don't judge it it's just not for me so yeah. so that was my choice that means that for a year almost, I haven't done any burlesque show. And of course, I miss it. Of course, I'm asking myself, okay, what am I gonna do next? Because as a creative person, I need to express myself. So this is the moment when I'm sitting down and I'm self-reflecting and I'm doing a lot of introspection. So for now, that's the only answer that I can give you. And I'm pretty sure after this, you know, I will, probably be a better version of myself i will find out things that i didn't even know about myself because you know most of the time uh, only when you face challenges you find things out about yourself so i mean we need to just enjoy the storm that and, is uh, you know that won't last forever yeah yeah if i can add something to like if there is one actionable thing i think anyone can do if they haven't been online they don't really want to change professions and they, they're not sure, um, but they know they want to transition. Like it's not their comfort zone. Again, I think perhaps this is my answer to everything, but research knowledge takes the anxiety out of a lot of activities. And I think a lot of people don't want to be online because it's also, it's a foreign environment. Um, it's something alien, it's something that doesn't feel comfortable um and usually generally speaking psychologically fear comes from the unknown from not knowing what to expect whether it's not knowing to what to expect from having an audience like anyone can comment on your picture or on your work and it's normal to be afraid of that um but it's simply researching and being ready and knowing what's going to happen when you do put yourself online uh, whether it's social media, whether you create your own website, I know we're going to have a couple of um, resources on how to do that easily because you definitely don't have to be a coder or a cyber anything uh, to have your own website. Um, we're going to have a couple of resources after the webinar. And it's simply understanding that um, once you've done your research, you gain confidence. There's no other way to do it but to do it. And at the same time, uh, we touched upon this a bit earlier. I mean, know how to tell the difference between a critic and a troll. A critic is going to help you. A troll is just going to be there to take you down. Um, your work is ugly. Mm. That's I don't relate to your work because I find that the feelings your work transmits aren't the ones that I've experienced because so and so and so and so on. You know, that's a critic. So I think it's very important that to, to be able to tell the difference when it's coming from a good place and when it's just, you know, online vitriol. On that level, because we were talking about how you can create your website, Dimpo shared with me some list of tools that you can actually use in order to create your website. One is them, them branding. So the website helps you basically to design your brand vision the value and personality. And even if you're a small business or you are, like we said, a performer, 
you can actually build use this platform to build your your own brand um or like another one is i our words and never heard of this this is good like give great example of innovative website to inspire creating your own portfolio so this is another suggestion thank you dean paul for this suggestion also like there are some other platform that can be a little bit like can they require a little bit of investment like squarespace as also like quite simple super simple templates to use I personally use that when I built my first web website two years ago uh, for, for We Hate Pink, for example. And at the beginning, it's like it can be overwhelming when you think about, oh my God, I need to build my own website. But then if you use like some tools that can help you with templates and then you build step by step, it's not, it can be not that complicated. So um dimple do you want to add something or what we were saying what we are saying now um i just want to quickly say to sadie what you said before with the glasses like that's so funny because i've just got glasses now and i only wear them for work because i basically one it's blue light glasses which i don't know if they work but they seem to have a placebo effect but the other thing is i just feel smarter wearing them and i feel like people take me more seriously um but yeah i just i just love i feel like it's an armor and i think it's really great that you that you brought that up because i feel like i've been validated um so so a few things um i would say that coming back to transitioning uh, but not wanting to leave your career behind i think exactly what christina was saying about having transferable skills and i think someone's um competitive advantage basically lies uh, between that kind of intersection between your assets so that could be like your education your qualifications the training that you have um and then the market reality so that's like you know supply and demand and uh, are, is your skills in need and if they are which they will be where are they needed um and then of course staying true to your values so whether that's you want to help people or whether you would as a, like, as a caregiver or whether you want to build a product or you know whatever it could be I, I would i would keep reassessing your internal like compass to decide what your assets are and whether you want to add to them what your values are whether you want to change them and what the market realities are in the time of covid um so i, I found that helpful last year because actually it's interesting that we all talk about publishing online and i was thinking I, I do online and social media all the time i want to pivot offline now actually and kind of leave some of that behind so i think it can go it can go both ways um in terms of Website and tools, uh, I would start off, like Christina said, with with research um, and definitely training. There's lots of free courses online. Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. Yeah. There's like Facebook, uh, Facebook Blueprint and Google Garage and HubSpot Academy, and they'll all be sent to, to everyone here, but they're a great sort of stepping stone into gaining new skills and adding yeah. to your to your skills. So I would I would I would start there and then I'd once you've done your SWOT analysis and your goals and what you want to achieve. Uh, and then that will give you an idea of uh, how to go next. And then the last thing I will say is, I think on social media, you have like open communities like Instagram, TikTok, whatever, but then you have, you do have closed communities. So you have like private Facebook groups, you have newsletters, you can start a podcast, you know, so there's lots of different formats you can experiment with. Um, for me, like I, started a newsletter recently and because I just I was always banging on about social media and my friends would say can you just like send them to me by whatsapp rather than just telling me about them and so I found that actually that closed community of your super hyper engaged audience was better for me rather than just putting out like three tweets a day or whatever if you know what I mean so yeah I think there are closed communities and open communities and I would consider all of them amazing yes thank you very much dimple that was that is quite useful so i'm trying to be kind of quick so to give also space to people to to also you know like um be part of this conversation so we can continue to talk about how to stand out visually uh, which is actually quite interesting and i will add to that also you know what we can do in order to stand out visually but also for someone that is not a visual person what they can do in order to use copy and writing 
in a different way. So on that, I think, Christina, you probably can give some practical tips on that level. So yeah. covering the copyright, <laughs> and now I will ask Gloria to, co to cover probably the, the visual, the visual side of it. And I think I could have a whole webinar just about that because I, I, for a long time, being studying fashion marketing, I was amongst a lot of designers and creative people and people who were actually like, you know, literally able to draw. Um, and I felt like a little bit of the, like the odd duck because I couldn't, I mean, I could practice and I could, you know, sketch a little bit and do, but you know, that was never going to be the thing that I, I, I would work like that would never be my profession. Um, so I, I learned the basics of Illustrator, et cetera, but I was never good at it by any means. Um, but I had always been a writer and writing and reading was just like what I've all, always done ever since I was little. So coming into the marketing world, coming into fashion, definitely copywriting is absolutely a superpower, just as much. It's equal to any other, you know, um, it doesn't look like a talent from the get go because like everyone writes, not a big deal um but it's absolutely and it's a muscle writing is a muscle uh mm -hmm. so you got to exercise properly and i think that for people who are not visual um and sometimes it's really hard to accept that but i just i had to learn like that's why i always wear black i can't put together patterns i i, I wear black that's what i do um you know you got to find ways around it and the way that i found to express myself was in words in writing um so that's how I wanted to build my personal brand when I started looking for a job, when I finished uni and everything. Um, what I used was actually Wix, which doesn't seem to be as popular since Squarespace, but Wix.com offers you excellent free tools um, to build your own website, excellent templates, very easy to use. Um, I'm not paid by them, by the way, that would be nice. <laughs> But no, it, it really helped me so much and it was so easy to use. Um, you can definitely pay for it and then you can gain your own domain. But generally speaking, I mean, I think you can still, make it, depending on the kind of jobs you're applying, you don't really need your own domain necessarily if you just need to have a portfolio. Um, so what I did was basically use words to express myself. Um, I wasn't really able to create such a cohesive uh, brand visually because I did not I did not feel like those were my fortes. Um, and I was applying for jobs in content marketing. So I was applying for jobs in blog uh, in writing blogs and creating um, even social media posts. That's also copywriting. Um, so what I did was basically put together a couple of uh, proofs that I had these skills, because at least in marketing, uh, generally speaking, the barriers of entry aren't that high. So you're not always going to find people that say you need to have a BA in this and a master's degree in this. And then you uh, you, you could do with a PhD, too. Um, you're not really going to see that in marketing because it's about transferable skills, which Dimple also mentioned. Um, so you need to have proof that you can do these things. Perhaps you haven't studied them or perhaps you're pivoting from another industry. Um, so I wrote articles and I wrote it by myself. I wrote an introduction to myself because those were also just the types of jobs I was applying for. So if I can't write a couple of paragraphs of myself, why would somebody hire me to write about their brand? Um, and it's simply even if you don't have experience in writing, for example, if you haven't published articles or, you know, start your own blog, pub publish your own articles, um, create examples of your work if you really want to go there and you're applying for a job in content write about the company that you're applying for write as if you already work for them send them an article that could easily appear on their blog because that shows you know it shows you're motivated it shows you're able to understand their brand and you're it shows you're able to adapt your voice um because we we talk a lot about personal branding but generally speaking if you work for a company you're using their brand, you're speaking with their voice. Um, so that company needs to be able to trust that you're gonna use their voice correctly. So I think that's definitely, so for me, that's what helped. I found a tool that was easy to use and I spoke to my abilities. I thought about what I could do best to impress somebody who wanted to, who would potentially hire me and that was writing, that was what I could do. Um, and then, I I just did my best. Like I I tried and it worked in the end. But definitely took a lot of failure along the way. Um, and the way I got around to graphics and everything, one 
Um, and I'm sure we we have a lot of resources for that stock photography and whatnot. Um, but because I'm extremely self-centered, uh, I just took photos of myself. I went out with my best friend and I just like I took like a really smiley photo of my face. I was like, please trust me. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much and it worked. I, it I found it up before I had my university graduation ceremony. So I guess that means it worked. In, and if we are talking about uh, how to stand out visually, Gloria, what you will suggest, like um, trying to, I know it's, it's like, it's quite complicated, but trying to be, uh, trying to summarize that in some way, like in a, like three steps or five steps. Mm -hmm. I think the very first step across um, everything you want to focus on, if you're like a visual person or if you prefer writing and everything online is knowing which platform to pick. So sometimes you would feel, oh, I need, I need to, to be online. I need to have a Facebook page. I need to have a Twitter profile. I need to have an Instagram page. No, um, that was what it was like a few years ago. But right now, every single platform has a different language and a different audience. So you need to think, where do I fit? If I'm a if I'm a writer, maybe it's more in a platform like Twitter when it's it's more um, around words rather than visuals. If I'm a if I'm a designer, if I'm an illustrator, Instagram might be the best platform for you. Um, TikTok is a bit of everything. TikTok is, is still quite new and it's shaping, and you could find your niche on TikTok. So if you're an artist and you want to show the process of creating the picture of creating what you're creating, TikTok is a great place to showcase that. So do your research, like Christina was saying, go on each platform and try to find out which one you think you fit in and you like the more being on it. And you don't have to be across everything because trust me, it's going to be like a full time job and you don't want that. So pick your platform, do some research. So those are two steps already. And then if you're a visual person, um, now I'm going to say a thing that's really hated. It's just finding your unique voice, your unique style. And I know it is annoying when you hear people saying, find your unique style and you don't know what your unique style is. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I don't know what my style is. Um, but um, that's exactly the, the answer. Just like try different things. See if you want to get inspired by other creators, by other um, designers and artists, try to get inspired by them um test different things and then you you will get there you will find your style but you need to put yourself out there so you can start building an identity for your brand or for yourself you can start putting down what you like like speaking of like color palettes and fonts and things like this just just give it a try put it put it out there and until you you have it in front of you you won't know if it's something that you find yourself in or you want um and then, yeah, that's basically it. And then once you feel like you have found your unique voice, be consistent with it because it's going to take time for people to get to know you. So you yeah. need to be consistent with your values and your brand identity. Absolutely. Yes, that is a really good point. And I listed on the shared notes all uh, the platform that kindly Dean Paul and Gloria have listed for me. So you will find three and also Christina. Um, so um, three platforms to how to create your website, the free online courses to improve social media presence, brand and marketing, and three different plat actually, yeah, Christina also wrote out the big side, but like how you stand out visually, um, the color jeweler and Chrome Google, which is a website like um, Fonts Ninja Chrome extension. Uh, that it can help you to identify fonts from any website, Workman, try and but you can basically have a look at them and then find the right one for you. So this one, these are quite like some of some tips that you can use, some platform that you can use in order to build your brand. Uh, do you want to add something, Christina? You were saying something. Yeah, just I put down just in case anyone wants to have a look at it. It's um, I put the, down the website that I created for myself. Um, again, zero experience in any kind of website buildings, not a designer, not even that much of a visual person, even though it, it really doesn't make that much sense. 
Um, it's basically also wanted to note because this is personal branding um, that the website that if you click on it, you're going to see, you're going to see some really weirdish artsy photos uh, that I took at a museum. But this was not the website that I used to apply for jobs with. This was the website that I, these were the photos that I took after I got the job. Uh, the photos that I took before I got the job is one very clean in a white shirt with polka dots and just a big smile because I felt like that was just the kind of vibe they wanted to give off. Um, wanted people to see me as trustworthy. It, it, you know, it was just another side of me. It wasn't uh, necessarily, it was a performance, but it was showing off a different facet of myself. Whereas then I wanted to take the website in a more personal direction and show more of my artsy, nerdy, quirky personality. But when I knew that my goal was to get a job, I created this website with a series of uh, photos, which are still on my Instagram, um, that basically they transmitted to me, this is a professional person, this is trustworthy, this is somebody who does their job. Uh, but yeah, definitely that's an example of someone who just made a website one day, if you need so, any encouragement. Great, fantastic. So we were talking a lot about like, moving from the practical stuff to what we are all facing at the moment, the relationship, and I think this is more re relevant for Sadie and for Dixie, Francesca, Monica, um, we are, we're talking about <laughs> the relationship between um, mental health and personal brand. This is a kind of an important topic for me because what I'm trying to do with We Hate Pink is not just talking about, like, in this case, personal brand and focus on the career, but also see different side of that because as women, sometimes we face, the, we face different kinds of things, especially on in the workplace. And for us can be particularly hard at the moment because no doubt there are stats on that. This crisis it, it has been hitting women more than any other people in the world. So uh, we are the people that lost the job more than everyone else. And, and it's been particularly difficult for moms at the moment of like trying to deal with the work and the kids at home. So it's been pretty hard on us. So on that level, when I'm talking about personal brand and mental health, we also see a lot of line these days, a constant push on finding your voice, find your platform. We are also talking about that now, putting yourself out there, but not everyone is ready and not everyone likes to be on social media. So what's your experience and what you can suggest to someone that is actually want to face the situation in a different way and doesn't really want to put themselves out? So Sadie, how you will, what you will suggest to someone that is like, like we said before, instead of like moving and shifting industry, it's someone that is like actually overwhelmed by all this information about personal brand, be out there, find your job. Oh, this is the best way to put your work out and see around that everyone has a million followers, 20, 50 likes, and I get just four. So right. I'm gonna face that kind of situation. Um, How you um, your mental health as well. You know, since we've almost all been home for a year now, and in that time, you know, in the beginning, it was like, oh my gosh, okay, we're home. Now is going to be a great time to do, 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 do. And then as things progressed, there was less and less do and more like, oh my God, when are we going to get out? Um, I think we need to give ourselves grace. I think that as women, we take on so much and we take responsibility for so much and we don't take responsibility for just holding space for ourselves and for mental health and for you know personal development and for just uh health physical health we need to give ourselves space so it doesn't matter if you've taken all this time to kind of now just start thinking about what it is that you want to do it doesn't matter because that was your timing. We have to trust our own timing. Um, I am a cancer survivor. And one of the things that I learned in that journey was that I need to give myself space and grace to do the things 
in the time that I see that I can do them. So I've learned to not push because we push, push, push. We think we have to get everything done today. And then again, we have to get everything done tomorrow. And then we have to get everything done. When I, I realized that when something can't get done today, it can't get done today. Tomorrow's another day. Can't get done tomorrow. You know what? Let's think about this. Ah, maybe next week, right? We have to be able to give ourselves that kind of space so that we don't make ourselves, you know, anxious and frustrated and and annoyed because we we can't get it done. Because you know what? Sometimes you're going to wake up one day and you're going to be like, I just want to lay here. And all those things that I thought I was going to do today, they're not getting done. And you know what? That's okay. Just lay there. Take that time, right? And just lay there and 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 do what it is that your body and your mind and your subconscious and everything is telling you to do. Because honestly, everything will still be there tomorrow. My most productive year in actually growing my brand and putting myself out there has been this last these last two years after going through cancer and after always giving myself the space to go you know what i'm gonna go take a nap right now everything else can wait oh you know what i didn't get that thing done that i wanted to get done today tomorrow's a new day i'll do it tomorrow or next week or you know what let me just think about this and maybe next month so giving ourselves space, because you know what? In that space is when you're going to start to, in that space is where you're going to get the downloads that are going to allow you to then be clearer on what it is you want to do. Because when I started, I was a lot different and I had a lot of different thoughts than I do now. And I was doing different things than I am now. So you kind of, grow with it and just roll with it but we put we put so much so much on ourselves as women and i wish that you know we could we we could you know if you've got to focus on the kids today because that's that's what you need to do and that's what you you want to do that's what you do if you know it's just give yourself that space and i i absolutely agree and I'm the worst on doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. And be, yeah, I put myself sometimes in the situation in which my to-do list is endless. And I sometimes, I most of the time force myself to do more. And I have to learn that. I definitely need to learn that. Um, on that, um, Dixie, do you want to add something? Because on, when I was talking about this like constant pressure that we feel sometimes to necessarily be out there or like looking for be amazing or be on social, be online. So what do you think about that? Yeah, for um, my experience. Can I just I, say yeah. one thing before? Sure. I'm sorry. Um, sorry it's three o'clock. I did not realize that we were going to go this long. And I actually okay. have a meeting that I need to go to. Okay. Um, um, so I'm so sorry to leave, but thank you so much for this mm -hmm. opportunity. And I just love all the information that everybody has shared. I cannot wait to continue to um, hone relationships yeah. with all of you as we go forward. Thank you so much, Sadie. And I'm sorry because I know it gets you 92 minutes. So probably we should try to be quicker as well. But thank you so much for being here. Your contribution has been amazing. And thank you. definitely keep in touch. And we, you are now part of the network. We can continue this conversation in the future for sure. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 So I was asking you, Francesca, yeah, so what do you think about? Um, yeah, I mean, I totally, I totally agree with the city and um, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, sorry, because you're freezed for a second. So oh. no, I completely agree with Sadie and um, it's hard to think about something else to be added on that. Um, from my experience, uh, since I work with image, I've seen that, uh, you know, there's a sort of race on having to show that you are still doing something 
or having, having to show it's still fabulous that you know we're gonna go back on stage and uh, blah, blah 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 these kind of things and I uh, on one hand um, I'm, I like the fact that people are so hopeless, hopeful, but on the other hand, I think that we should be more realistic. So my choice on my social networks, although I mean I'm not that consistent, I have to admit, as I, now I'm showing what's behind the character, what's the behind the stage person. And which is something, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm wrong. I'm not con not consistent. I am consistent. Um, because I've always had this uh, opinion. I have never liked um, the fact that on stage I'm a totally different person than I am on real life. I've always brought some reality, some truth in my stage character. Of course, I don't wear those dresses and all that makeup every day of course and i don't like to you know going everywhere on high heel shoes and um so that is the stage character but the stage character has definitely some truth and nowadays i can't be on stage and all the things that we said before i'm gonna show who's behind the stage character and uh Hopefully, you know, like I think I can hold on to that and find out that there are other things that a performer can do. Especially, I'm I'm really talking only about burlesque performers. I'm not talking, yeah. you know, about me as a person because that, there's so much more to add. But you know, just focusing on that, on being a burlesque performer, and nowadays we're so limited to what we can do. I'm yeah uh, my aim is to maybe also invite the others to do that because we are much more interesting than the character that we are showing out there there's so much more we can find out about, about ourselves and people might like us even better if we yeah. are more truthful you know without the pressure of always being fabulous because that's boring and that's also like you're not memorable you don't stand out because we're all the same and that is like going back to what we were saying at the beginning of life, find that authentic self and trying to tell that story that is your story and no one else that is unique. And probably go back to that, take that time, like Gloria said, like Christina said, like Dimple said, to like find who you really are and then plan and put together your, your brand. What I'd like to know to do now is see if we have any questions from the people in the room. So if anyone has questions that wants to ask directly to the speakers or if there's anything that we didn't cover till now, we are quite happy to, to answer your questions. This is usually the moment where you have to wait a little bit <laughs> forward. Um, in the meantime, so I leave, I, 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 I mean, I did the call, but in the meantime, it's something that is quite interesting that we, we highlight when we had the conversation last time before, like by putting together, uh, um, Monica said big thank you. Thank you, Monica. So one thing that uh, I also find quite curious by looking at everyone online, and it's something that some of you highlight in particular francesca is like you know sometimes you uh, you you remember the standard advice which is under promise and over deliver and it's always sounded really good to me but sometimes with personal brands we can end up to over promising and under delivering <laughs> so and this is something that you find sometimes online so it's like amazing profiles people that say that they can deliver amazing things but then at the end there is no real uh, content behind so what do you think is the right balance you think you're asking me no i must tell all of you uh, everybody oh, okay Someone wants to take this question then if we don't have any question from the audience we can actually then call the close hmm. the web this is will be the last question so what do you think should be the balance between you know like a Promise, over promise, and under deliver. I, 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 oh, Christina, go ahead. I was just going to say that some people are typing, so oh, I think. Yeah, 
dimpled with the joke for a while. So I, I'm curious to know what she wants to say. Um, I think uh, it goes back to um, sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like I, uh, I think it's important to show that you are testing and learning, as Christina said, um, and that you're showing uh you know sharing your learnings and you know it doesn't have to be this completely perfect image that you're trying to maintain and something that i do a lot is talk about my own frustrations with my own job quite openly um not like to the point of you know bashing my manager or anything like that but it's like a way for me to rationalize my thoughts and say and put it out to my community and say you know what do you guys think of this like for example last year i was finding that as everyone was pivoting online um everyone wanted more resource from the social media team. And I was like, that's great, but this is learning to, le leading to a serious burnout problem for social media managers. Um, so I think you, and as Francesca was saying, if you can be honest about the frustrations, but in a way that's that's not like being a troll and not just like bashing it, but like trying to, trying to like say, this is a problem that I'm having, is this a problem that my, the rest of, people in my media having and then you try and come to a, a solution together so I think I always I always um talk about my own yeah my own frustrations and my problems with with my daily job and day-to-day -day life because some people Emily in Paris for example uh love to paint a beautiful picture of being a social media manager but there's a lot of grind and, and hustle behind it and sometimes people sometimes it doesn't pay off sometimes like I'll work on a campaign for like ages and i'll be like this is great people are gonna love this this is gonna go far yeah. it's great the internet and then it just completely falls short of expectations but then i'm like that's actually really great because now i know that that doesn't work and i won't do that again in the future so it was if, if in a way i mean you're very blessed if this happens but if, if all you're talking about is your successes then actually you're not really growing um as a person so yeah that's what i would say so Claudia is asking if we can probably have some practical tips, like from two or three of you, like some final takeaways, uh, like if you can suggest two or three things that needs to be done in order to start consciously build a personal brand online, like just three tips, like the first three that you think are the main one that someone needs to do from tomorrow in order to start that personal brand online i've only got one and i'm gonna keep it super short um and i think if everyone can see it coming do your research if you're the best educated person in that room that room being your instagram or your website or whatever it is you know what to expect you know what's coming you're ready for it i i cannot give any better advice than this and it's been well, the one tip each so i didn't get the message right so <laughs> one tip each yeah so you educate it. yourself so what what's your tip gloria my tip will be when you're building your personal branding do it just for yourself don't do it for your audience you will find your audience there's pages on instagram there are snail pages that have millions of followers you will find your audience but do it for you so don't don't think of oh maybe people will like this or that just think of what you like and what you want to do and you will find an audience i promise you well i would say then uh, if you are not good at uh, visuals and uh, you know you don't have the competence then to you know then actually like putting it out there ask for help yeah dimple um, I would say, think about, again, I would do that internal self-reflections. Self I'd write down your assets, I'd write down your values, and I'd write down um, what, how they fit into the market realities and just, and just list them out. Um, and also do that, do that SWOT analysis to so the strengths, weaknesses, yeah. opportunities, um, and possible threats. Amazing. Yeah. Actually, I add the SWOT analysis in the personal brand toolkit as one of the first steps. So, well, thank you very much, everyone. We get to under three minutes, so uh, we had a lot to talk tonight. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time, for put all this all the effort in this uh, webinar. 
Uh, sorry again for the technical problem that we had at the beginning and say that to the speakers. I will make sure that it will be fixed um, next time. Ah, well, it's probably we have two questions. Sorry, I was up, I was saying oh, thank you everyone, but I see Vanessa and Tiziana writing something. So let's see. But in the meantime, ah, no, it was like just a thank you, which is not just a thank you. So thank you everyone. And I hope to see you on next webinar. And your contribution was amazing. I also personally learned a lot today. And just to clarify, I will share all the, all the, um, um, platform tips that we had tonight in one document and share with all the audience um in an email uh, tomorrow so we we'll, you also receive the toolkit and then you also will have access to the replay of the webinar so if you don't want to watch you can just listen to it um so thank you again and have a lovely evening thank, thank you. you so much thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much it was Bye. a pleasure